I think this first uh, little section right now, we're going to talk about what what to do when you first get started. Some of the questions that I've seen and get often when I'm first introducing somebody or talking to somebody about being prepared. When somebody comes up to me and says, Paris, what do I do? I, I, I get it. I understand I need to be prepared. What do you recommend is the first step? So that's going to be the kind of the question that we're going to talk about in this first segment here. So um, I can kick off with some ideas, but what do you guys think? What If someone comes to you and says, hey, I get the importance of preparing and being prepared. I've never started, never done it. Maybe I've done it a little while. Maybe I've listened to a few other podcasts. Um, but what what would you recommend I do? Well, that's the first step is just having that desire and knowledge. Uh, once you do that, you're so far ahead of most people I know, honestly. Uh, just having that desire, okay, what do I do next? And then you start to search, whether you listen to us or whomever. There's plenty of information out there, but you just have to have that desire to go and do it rather than just live with what your your current situation is mm -hmm. right because most people i talk to it's it's you know quite discouraging that do you see what's happening and i i i count off different uh, different things that are going on and they say yeah okay i'll uh kind of wishy-washy I'll, I'll head down to the store this weekend or next week you know like you need to go now. You know, that's my urgency. That's my <laughs> how, how excited I am about about the, about prepping and being prepared and such. Whereas others, I can just feel that they're not excited whatsoever. So you have to have that excitement. I guess they call it excitement. It's uh, well, it's definitely not fear. That's desire, more right? motivation. It's desire. Yeah, absolutely. It's like they wake up. You've got to wake up first. You've got to see that there's an issue. And when you recognize that, a lot of people get that deer in the headlights situation. Go, oh crap. Mm -hmm. And they freeze. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to get out of the way of the car. And so what I always recommend is assess your situation first. Okay. And we, sh we should, let's go ahead and throw something up on the website later this week. So you guys listening can actually have a downloadable document to help you with this, right? You wake up, you assess your situation. Number one, do I have the emergency rule of three, which is first, I can only survive three minutes without air, right? Am I, is my house underwater? No, good. Next, I need, good start. I need three days, right, worth of water. Well, sorry, shelter. We've got a house, right? You got out an apartment. So that's your second thing. So the emergency rule of three is, is you can only last three hours in, you know, extreme elements without exposure taking a huge toll and possibly killing you. So that's why we do shelter second. Third is water. Three days of water, minimum. And that's not like, I can survive on a liter of water a day. No. I've seen websites say a gallon of water per day per person. That's just for your food and drinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you're all freeze dried foods, guess who's going to be plugged up and wanting to die within four days of eating all freeze dried foods? You, because you're so full of sodium and things you're not used to eating on a daily basis, <laughs> but you're going to wish you were dead, right? So make sure you've got... A gallon of water a day. To so have drink. a laxative in your 72 hour kit. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Get your get your water. Get three days of water for your whole family for hygiene, for cleaning the house. So your personal hygiene for cleaning the house and for consumption. So you're looking at two gallons a day minimum per person. Yep. Right. Then next you look at your food because you don't need food. You could like listen to the intermittent fasting podcast out there. Some of these guys go 30 days, 40 days, no food. And I could probably like, look at me. I could probably go 60. You, you got Would food I want stores. to? You carry your food no. stores with you? Unfortunately, well, That's yeah. what I joke is, is around my waist is where I carry my 72 hour kit. Nice. Right. <laughs> so we, 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 a lot of people get panicked. And they're like, I gotta go get all this food. Well, yeah, but let's focus on, on first things first. Right getting the right thing. So start, make sure your shelter is okay. Number two, then you get your water. Number three, then you get your food. And mm -hmm. then you start getting all the cool gadgets and everything else after that. But focus on first going back to shelter again. Shelter meaning, okay, now I've got inclement weather I've got to focus on. I've got to focus on, I live in, in the mountains of Utah and I got 16 inches of snow the last two days. If the power goes out, what are my heating sources in my house? That's the next step to look at, in my opinion, right? Get those things taken care of so that I can at least survive. 
then you start going on to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And, and everyone's going to prioritize differently and it's going to matter where you live, but it's like, that's prioritization and then assess your situation. Okay. Do I have the water? Okay. No. Okay. I need to get some water. Do I have any food and put it paper to pen? Uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to create a document and put it on the website and, and you guys can download it and it'll actually make sense for you beginners, for you advanced guys, you know, you look back on it and say, Hey, that's a pretty good place to start and pass it out to your friends. Like help the people that you know, that are starting on this journey with the right tool. And let's just get some more tools out there for everybody. And, and it is, it, oh, sorry, Paris. It, it is a circle. Like Scott was saying, you start with three days worth of water. You make sure that's good. You got food, you come back around to your shelter and build that up and continue to uh, lengthen the time that you have for your water storage, your food storage, and so forth. And like mm -hmm. you say, uh, come back around to your to your your residence, your shelter. How can I heat that in winter? How can I keep it in, cool in the summer and so forth? And just expand the different layers uh, yeah. with that just, level of preparedness. I just moved from California and how I have my shelter is different. I have to prepare for different things now that I'm in Utah. So I have snow. <laughs> I've never had snow to deal with. So in my preparedness, I've got to now uh, think about, okay, what if things hit the fan during a snow season or a snowstorm, I've got to be ready for those types of things. I have all preps. I have all kinds of preps for warm weather, but I don't have as much preps as, as I should for that cold weather. So that would, that would be the first thing. I, you know, if somebody asked me that question real quick, I would, one of the first things I would say is one water, just like you said, uh, Scott and Shane, you both said that water is so critical. You can't live without water. But if somebody's really going to get food storage, I would say start, you know, you hear get a year supply, you get six months supply, all this stuff. I would say just get a, a week supply, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. start with a, a month supply. And the way I would do that real quickly is what do you eat for breakfast? If it's oats and a cereal, make find out how many servings you eat and then buy six or seven boxes and just buy one little one or two extra boxes every week at the grocery store. What do you have for lunch? plan that out and just multiply it by what do you, what, what you eat in one day, multiply it by 30 days and then multiply it by 90 days. As you start to build your, your preps, your, that's how you do it. You just start with what you already eat. Now that 30 day, 90 day supply needs to be what you would eat right now. Every day. Yeah. And what's fun is like, we'll go and we'll coupon or we'll find like the killer deal. And it's like, our kids will eat cereal all day long. Great. So what do we have a ton of cereal? And when they go through one, we've got six more boxes and we go buy a new one once that one's empty and put it at the back and you just rotate your food and you just keep going and you're fine. Yep. Like we have, we have 90 days of pantry food. Like you build up to it. If you have the money, go get it now because shoot, inflation's coming. It's already here, but it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So if you've got the extra, get the extra. That keep your money out of money, keep it in food, and then look at assets, right? Get the things that you're going to live off of and survive off of for the next 90 days done first. Amen. Right. So, and then also, you know, make sure the whole family's together on it. If you live all by yourself, it's not hard to get prepped by yourself, but you've got to find where you can with your community. You've got to find places you can work with them, meet up with them, right? Find people that are like-minded that you can, you can bond with, right? Not everyone that is into prepping, you're going to jive with, mm -hmm. you know? So find people that work well with you. So if you need to look for people to do that with, go on social media, find the different groups, see which one you resonate with, you know, hop on our Facebook group, um, follow us on, on Instagram, follow us on Twitter. But I mean, you can follow us almost on any social media platform. We're on Gab now. We're going to be on Tumblr soon. So get on there, resonate with our groups and, and find the people who you like in your areas. Cause we're all over, like surprisingly, what was it? 6% of our listeners are in California, right? You guys are stalwarts holding out behind the enemy line. Like literally like all the stalwarts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if they're listening, they're either spying on us uh. or hello spies, or you're actually paying attention and you're trying to be prepared. And yeah. our mission is to create prepared communities. Well, so, I, know, I know Scott, um, a day or two ago, you uh, uh, dropped a photo on Facebook and Instagram, I guess, of the pocket mm -hmm. dump, right? Mm -hmm. and I, th I think that's one thing that people can do uh, right now, uh, other than, like you said, the survival rules of three, which are what I base most of my decisions on when I'm trying to determine um, priority. 
that's what I use. But what what is going to change your life right now? What's going to motivate you to move forward every and do make a step every single day? One thing I brought up, I know we talked about a long time ago, is is if you don't carry, let's see if you can even see this. It's all nice blue screen. Again. <laughs> there you go. If you don't carry a knife with you every day, you don't appreciate how much this tool can do for you every single day. Um, and so that's one of the first things I say is is put a knife in your pocket, you know, or a tool, multi-tool. You can see this into a Swiss tool. Uh, those are some of my EDC, my pocket dump things. There you go. Right. Uh, are, just have, are we all just showing ours? That. Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you yours if you show there me. There you mine. go. There you go. Or I'll show you mine if you show me. Yours. <laughs> all right. Wait. Before we go any further, what's your brand? Everybody has a brand. What's your What's your pocket knife brand? Spiderco. I love Spiderco. That's awesome. What else? Paris. I, what's your brand? Yeah. Right now, it's, uh, my uh, EDC knife is from LA Police Gear. Oh, see, I'm a Kershaw guy for my everyday carry, but I've got Buck, I've got Spyderco, I've got. I mean, yeah, it's it's personal I've preference. Got top bench. Yeah, find absolutely. what feels the best mm -hmm. in your hand and 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 works with the uses that you are going to use it for the most. Like, that's what makes most sense. Don't worry so much about the brand. Worry about your particular case like your use. And, and as you continue to use that tool, you will, may realize, oh, this doesn't quite work for what I want it to do. And then you, that's when you start to learn. That's when you start to discover really what tools work best for you and you start to adapt and, and to change. And, and then your life, your eyes open up to all these different possibilities. That is if you are not currently carrying a knife or have any kind of EDC mm -hmm. with you. You know, the, the other thing I always have with me that I'm a, an absolute freak about is, is uh, just carrying a, an everyday carry small little flashlight. Use it every day. Um, and I have my favorites, brands and minimum lumens and all kinds. I could talk your, your ears off for hours about flashlights. But, yeah, we're uh, going to get some gear stuff too. Eventually, it's, you know, some yeah. of this podcast, we'll talk about some of that cool stuff. That's, yeah, that's absolutely. cool stuff. And so it's just starting to discover those things and take a, a different avenue and learn something different that you didn't mm -hmm. know anything about. That's really mm -hmm. what I'm trying to, trying to talk, say here. And, and just to expound, pocket dump, going back to that, it's just the daily things you carry all the time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, That's absolutely. all it means. What you carry on your person, you know, I've got a bag full of other stuff, but what else do you carry on your person in case you didn't have that bag? I mean, it should include, mm -hmm. obviously, your wallet with some cash in it. It so should pocket, include, pocket include dump your sounds, firearm. It pocket include, dump sounds a lot like that old uh, ad, uh, hand check, you know, when you're yeah, when exactly. you walking on dating, your hand check, hands when you walk in on your son and daughter, uh, yeah. you know, hand check with their dates. Exactly. So yeah, so pocket dump what you have on your person. And obviously, you can be very critical about what you carry. Um, it can be very minimal, or it can be mm -hmm. you have cargo pants, just absolutely full pockets all the way full of everything you might have. For me, I'm not that picky. That's why I have a bag. That's why I have yeah. a vehicle. That's why I have resources all around me instead of always carrying a, a go bag. You know, I, I don't like the bug out bag. But that's another thing on my list is, do you have a go bag? My go bag is my my briefcase, my bag, you know, my work bag, and I have other. I have a bag here just for my AR. That is, I grab it and it's ready to go. Yep. So, a really good life, beginner life go begins bag, to change that way. A really good beginner go bag. They talk a lot about as a seventy-two hour kit. You know, that's a great way to go. You can buy them at most stores nowadays. And then if that's what all you have, that's what all you can start with. Do it. No, like you've got no, it. No, <laughs> no, no. I knew Scott was going to no. chime in on this. No. The number one killer in preparedness is buying one of those piece of garbage bags at those survival stores, the red yeah. bags. Because you here's, think that's what why. you need. Right. 90% of it, you have no idea what it is. You don't know how to use it. Don't start with that bag. Get a nondescript bag. These are big, bright red bags. Get a nondescript bag, <laughs> mm -hmm. a gray bag, a blue bag. Yep. Like, I don't care. Go to, go to Goodwill and get the cheapest bag. It could be a backpack. To you know, from your yeah, absolutely. Backpack. and that's what it should be is a backpack. backpack. Yep. Get a backpack and you don't want to fill it with 30 pounds, 40 pounds worth of stuff. Start with your emergency rules. I first need to have, so I have my bag. I need to put a shelter in there. All it needs to be is, is a tarp or a poncho or your jacket, mm -hmm. just a jacket, jacket, jacket yeah. right? Yep. Doesn't need to be much. Like don't go crazy and don't be like, I got a specialized tube tent, it's 14 pounds, three ounces. Like that. Why? And you'll right. use it. You'll use it once, and it'll get ruined. And yeah. just like Scott saying, those kits are 
are made to to sell and they're so they're cheap oh look all i can do this and feel prepared and you spend 49.95 on it and you'll use the tube tent once it'll tear yeah. and it's, it's done but like yeah like got, got saying you know put together and i think that's why i'm also saying is, is figure out what knife you like figure out which light you like this is part of your 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 go bag your 72 hour or i know scott wants will push this the 96 hour is really where it should be but it should be quality items that you've put together yourself that you have yep. experience using you know how to use and uh that you're competent with and scott at least no, that leads into some skill set stuff. But let me just wrap up real mm -hmm. quick on the on the beginner stuff. If you're if you're just getting started, you're brand new. First thing you want to do is take assess your situation. Look at the area where you live. Make sure that you have. If anything happens, make sure you're ready to go with whatever weather is available or whatever ha weather happens to you in your area. Make sure you have your water. Make sure you have some extra food. Make sure you have a little bit of a go bag. Maybe some everyday carry a pocket knife, flashlight. Those are some of the first things you should get. And then we can start looking into getting a bag, get your 72 hour kit built up, but based on the things that you know about.